The Wolf and the Fox. Once upon a springtime, when the new leaves were in their brightest green, range of greens, the wolf and the fox were walking together through the forest. What a handsome couple. The wolf in his expensive silver fur coat with his aristocratic muzzle and his diamond tipped teeth. And the fox, the pretty fox, trotting alongside in her elegant black ankle boots with her dancing jet eyes and that red, red brush carried as light and high as a powder puff. Well, that was what they used to look like. That was what they looked like in their prime. But if you look a bit closer now, well, the wolf's coat, the fur coat, is getting a bit stretched. He's his jaws have, have thickened and his gait has stiffened. And the little fox still trotting lightly alongside, but her ears are drooping, her brush is drooping, and her eyes not dancing but darting, looking as though she'd rather be anywhere than where she is. But along they walk when suddenly the wolf's great paw comes down on the fox's shoulder. I'm hungry, he said, and he grinned at her. Is there anything to eat around here? Or, well, I must say you're looking most delicious yourself today, Mrs Fox. There's no need for that, said the fox. There's a field near here with a flock of sheep, and I happen to know there are two plump lambs. I'll fetch you one. Fetch them both, shouted the wolf. But the fox was already away, running fast and low, hugging the hedge like a shadow. And in a trice, she was back with a lamb in her jaws. A long time before it's down, even noticed it had gone. And the wolf, without saying thank you, sank his teeth into the little lamb. The fox made, gratefully made her excuses and left trotting back to her lair. But all too soon the wolf had finished the lamb and the thought of the other woolly morsel still leaping and frolicking around the field made his mouth water. But Fox had gone. I'll just have to fetch it myself, he said. And he lumbered away towards the, the field. But the commotion he made breaking through the hedge. He snapped the twigs. He yowled when his coat got caught on the brambles. He s yowled even louder when the, when the stinging nettle swung across his muzzle. So the, oh, the whole flock knew he was coming and they set up such a bleating that the shepherds came running with their crooks and their cudgels and they beat that wolf to within an inch of his life. He only just escaped to go limping back to Fox in her lair. Well, that's a fine mess you got me into, he said. Well, Wolf, said the Fox, you just shouldn't be so greedy. One lamb should have been enough. Have you seen how fat you're getting? But I like food, said the Wolf. Well, the year rolled on and it was summer. And the meadows were full of all the bright, sweet-smelling, colourful flowers. And again, the wolf and the fox were walking along together through the fields. And the wolf, well, his coat looked as though it would split at the seams at any moment. He was so fat now. And the fox, her brush was so low and dejected that it was sweeping the road as they went. But when the wolf saw the little busy bees stopping on each flower and drinking their fill, it made his mouth water. His paw came down heavily on the fox's shoulder. I'm hungry. And he grinned at her. Is there anything to eat around here? Or can I say that you're looking most mouth-wateringly delicious yourself this morning, Mrs Fox. There's no need for that, she said, and she stiffed the air. Hmm, I'm right. The farmer's wife 
I think, has been cooking her rich, thick pancakes. The ones that she fills with eggs and cream and cheese. I'll fetch you a few. Fetch them all, shouted the wolf. But the fox was already away, running fast and low, slinking in through the through the farmhouse door like a shadow. And on soft tiptoes, she removed half a dozen pancakes so delicately that the lid of the dish didn't even know it had been moved. Well, the wolf didn't even say thank you. He started to gobble up the pancakes and the fox made her excuses and trotted back happily to her lair. But what, what is probably quite a fine feast of, of, of pancakes for a fox is hardly a mouthful for a wolf. And he licked his lips and said, I want some more. But the fox wasn't there. Oh, I'll just have to go and get them myself, he said. And he set off at a run, which turned to a trot, which turned to a panting walk. And by the time he got to the farmhouse, he was wheezing like a rusty pair of bellows. He staggered to the kitchen, heaved his great paws up onto the larder shelf. The shelf tipped up, the dish of pancakes smashed onto the floor and the farmer's wife came rushing in to see what had happened. She saw the wolf and she screamed and all the servants came running with brooms, with mops, with the fire tongs and they chased that wolf around the kitchen and beat him to within an inch of his life. He only just managed to escape to limp back to the fox's lair. That's another fine mess you've got me into. Well fox, well wolf, you shouldn't be so greedy. You're, you're just a real glutton these days. In fact, looking at you, I, I think you are clinically obese. <laughs> you didn't need any more food. But I like food. I like eating, said the wolf. Lots and lots of food. Well, the year rolled on and the wolf and the fox were again walking through the forest, this time shuffling and kicking up all the dead leaves that they fell at their feet and as they walked oh well the wolf I should tell you by this stage his coat's all matted because he can't reach to clean it anymore and he has these great bald patches where his fat legs rub together <laughs> and the fox well her ears are down and her nose is down and her brush is trailing in the mud and all the life has gone out of her eyes and as they walked along, there was a cold blast of wind for the coming winter. And the wolf said, Fox, I'm hungry. It's time to start eating up for the winter. Is there anything to eat around here? Or, well, I must say, you've never looked so melt in the mouth delicious as you do today. There's no need for that, said the fox. I know the farmer has been killing his pigs for the winter. He salted the meat and put it in a barrel in his cellar. And I know a secret way into the cellar. I'll go and get you some. I've got a better idea, said the wolf. I'll come with you. We seem to have slightly different ideas of uh, portion control. <laughs> So the reluctant fox took the wolf with her to the cellar and she said, now this hole is our way into the cellar, but it's also our way out of the cellar, the only way out of the cellar if the farmer appears. So don't eat too much. I'm going to eat everything, said the wolf. In they went and the wolf soon had his jaws stuck in a big leg of pork. But the fox, she just nibbled a bit of meat and then she ran to the hole, jumped in, jumped out, jumped in, went back to her food. And she kept doing this 
until even the wolf noticed and looked up from his, his devourings and said, what are you doing, fox? And she said, well, I'm testing that I can still get out. This is our escape hole. And he said, oh, you don't need to worry about that. It's Sunday. The farmer's wife will be at church and he'll be making hay with the dairy maid or something. He won't bother us. And he carried on eating. But the farmer did eventually get down from the hayloft or wherever he'd been. And he did hear footsteps in the cellar. And he picked up his shotgun and came to see what was happening. Well, as soon as she heard the farmer's footstep on the cellar steps, the fox was away through the hole and running fast and low back to her lair. But the wolf, well the wolf was still scraping the bottom of the barrel. And when he looked up, he saw the farmer with his shotgun. And then he tried to get out of the hole, but he got stuck. He heard the farmer cock his shotgun but before he could fire it, the farmer heard the wolf's great voice from outside shouting, Stop! Farmer! Farmer kills wolf? Don't you know, that's the old model of story endings. That's, it's so predictable, it's so hackneyed, it's passe. Nobody tells stories like that anymore. You've got to think of the consequences. Look, have you seen just how big and fat I am? If you kill me, my weight against your walls might bring the whole farmhouse crashing down on our ears. And if you shoot me, well, my guts will explode all over you and you'll never get rid of the stench. <laughs> and have you thought what you're going to say to your wife when she gets back and wants to know why it was, took you so long to find us down here, I might be able to give you an alibi. So, face it, farmer, I'm just too big to kill. And the farmer hesitated. Should he kill the wolf and risk destroying everything he'd spent his life working for and building? Or should he perhaps give the wolf another chance and hope he could come up with a cunning plan another day. What should he do? Lee hesitated for a moment and then he said, nice try wolf, but you know, I'm a great advocate of the revival of traditional storytelling and he <laughs> shot the wolf on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>